Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. Got about one more minute. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, it's actually very um, symbolic because I'm trying to talk to um, today, but a little bit part of what I'm saying is how hard it is to teach in a classroom where students are busy doing something else. <laughs> so now I have this experience of teaching, well, not teaching, but giving presentation to very, very, you know, few, um, not a lot of people in the audience. I don't know if Mike is there. Oh, there's Mike. He just jumped in. <clears throat> Sounds good. And that's 2.40. So uh, I think we've got, okay, double check that it's recording. Um, so we'll start now. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the T4L conference. My name is Gretchen Blackburn, and I'm an instructional designer at Utah State. Um, very lucky to hear from Joanna Matujic today uh, from Southern Utah University. She's going to be talking about teaching large art history courses with iClicker application. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Joanna, if you'd like to introduce yourself, uh, go for it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gretchen. Uh, so um, I, I say, I'm Polish by birth, educated in Poland and in um, the U.S. I did my a PhD in art history at Indiana University Bloomington, and I got a position of a lecturer of art history here at SUU in 2019. Before that, I taught art history at um, Wabash College, Bucknell University, and as an associate instructor at Indiana University. So um, I sort of I presume I qualify as some, having some experience in teaching, but still not bored with teaching and still looking for ways how to teach. So my, my title is Teaching Large Art History Courses with iClicker Application. So first of all, at the very sort of bottom or left corner, there is a list of directions, instructions as to how to download, um, download and install the so-called iClicker application. So if we have anybody in the audience who would like to do it, so um, there will be a little bit of hands-on, uh, one or two questions we can do together, and at least you will know after the session, whether this iClicker thing is a thing you want to try in your classes or not. So um, if you would like to sort of, um, if you have some space on your phone, it's um, it's for free, you can easily uninstall it after the session. But if you can, can find in Play Store, simply search for iClicker, and then the full name is iClicker Reef, uh, Reef Polling. So please, if, you, if you'd like, install it and open it. And unfortunately, well, it will take a moment longer. You, you need to sort of sign up, like create your account, um, put your email um, address and create some kind of um, 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 password. And then there is another step to, um, you, you should be able to see a, a page um, that will allow you to look for institutions. So you, you have to start typing Southern Utah University um, and then there will be another window that will say uh, what course, like what course do you want to add? And if you type the word teaching, uh, I, I named, I created a course yesterday just for this session and I called the course teaching for learning, as you can see here in um, point number six. So if you'd like to sort of uh, join the course, add it, that would be fantastic. And then later on, we, we can I can show you what it looks like to, um, from a user point of view, a student point of view, what it is like to use iClicker application. And then, then you will be able to see, as I share with you uh, sort of my screen, well, I hope I can do that, how you will see what it looks like from um, sort of the side of a teacher. But also you as a viewer, as a student, you will be able to see your results. So um, if you can sort of, if you'd like, and you can work on, on the directions, instructions, that's fantastic. If not, I have here a friend who can sort of um, give some answers and I will give also the answers. So hopefully you can even see what it looks like um, as, we, as we sort of um, give these uh, answers. So um, now I'm sort of joining my own class right now in, on my cell phone. So iClicker application is described as so-called a classroom response technique, or if you open, um, 
if you open uh, the website on www.iclicker.com, it is uh, described as student engagement um, sort of um, process or student engagement um, sort of application method. Um, and you know both both descriptions are correct. Um, and there is not much research about um, iClicker. Uh, one of the early books uh, that um, I was able to uh, find is by Derek ba uh, Braff from 2009. Um, you can see now here the, the cover of the book. And he describes in general a classroom response systems, he says, are instructional technologies that allow instructors to rapidly collect and analyze student responses to questions posed during class. And that is very true. And this is, um, as, I, as I use iClicker now, this is one of the uh, few reasons that I, I do use it. But I must say, I uh, must admit that my reason for me choosing iClicker or trying to use it was quite my mundane reason of how to make my students pay attention. So you can see this sort of um, Washington Post um, photograph of student being bored. More often what I see is students sitting at the back uh, with their laptops on, not sort of looking up what's going on uh, on the um, projector screen. Um, and I do find it very um, difficult to teach, to maintain my enthusiasm, to maintain my passion. If I sort of glance at the auditorium and I see students being completely disengaged, um, sort of in my mind, I think, well, maybe they should drop the class. But then again, I'm thinking, how can I help them or make them pay attention in class? And I sort of came around with this um, eye clicker. So it's special, I think it's very valid, not so much for courses where students are more advanced, um, courses of higher level, which are smaller, and then you get students who are really majoring in a certain discipline. You probably may use the eye clicker there, but I think it really is working for, as for, in my case, general education, 1000 level introduction to visual arts. Uh, so my, my aim with iClicker, and at first um, I used so-called iClicker remote, and on the left you can see what it looked like. I had the station and the blue, um, um, the blue um, sort of a remote was my teacher's remote. I'm sorry for the noise, it's my cat meowing. <laughs> um, and on the right, you can see a student holding a, a white um, um, sort of student uh, eye clicker remote. So this is how I started. And I think I did achieve my name. I did have students engaged in the classroom because I asked them to participate in the classroom. But at the same time, I was very, you know, I'm, I'm like no I'm uncompromising teacher because I, I decided to make them accountable. Basically, they were graded on their um, responses. Um, so. This is more or less um, after during my first semester of using iClicker remote. Um, um, so that was spring 2020, interrupted by COVID in March. But I, I would say the fourth, the fourth, um, um, very basic again, very sort of simplistic maybe reasons I think that I achieved them uh, with iClicker. So that is sort of maybe even at that time also reading more and more literature, um, especially in, in Derek Braff's book. I did create active learning situation that students during my 75 minute long class session, I figured out between four and six questions uh, felt sort of right. It, it, I don't want to overpower students with questions where they have to click, but between four and six seemed to be a good number. They were evaluated, yes, they were made accountable. If they didn't pay attention, then they were losing points for class participation. What is important, number three, is efficiency. Um, not maybe spring 2020, but um, I basically teach a lot of these um, um, 1000 level general education, intro to visual arts courses, and they are big. I'm scheduled to teach in a 92 seat classroom, so I do have sometimes 92 students in each of them. And the uh, um, very idealistic um, well, sometimes I can do it, but I and I, I'd love to do more um, scaffolded writing assignments, but not when I'm asked to teach 250 students during a semester overall. So that's sort of a moment where iClicker comes in with a very easy, efficient method of transferring the points students got from iClicker Cloud, and that's the, the floating thing comes from iClicker Cloud. And it, they can be easily transferred to a gradebook, to Canvas gradebook. 
and attendance is taken also can be taken with iClicker. So if uh, at other times I would have a piece of paper, sheet of paper sort of circling around the classroom and then by hand putting all these um, attendance into Canvas roll call, iClicker can help with that as well. So I, I, but as I, so what I need to say is that the spring 2020, um, March COVID arrived and I was made to change from uh, iClicker remote to iClicker application. And that really um, changed the day for me. And you will see that I was able to ask different questions because of that sort of change from remote to iClicker application. So basically on the right, you are seeing um, a shot of, this is what I got from iClicker Cloud after the class, after I did the question. So students saw the PowerPoint slide, the black slide with the multiple choice question, and you can see how they answered. Now they answered, well, I wasn't happy. And so, so I will be sort of maybe in a moment talking about more about how I graded it and why I graded it the way I did. So after these four easy, very simplistic goals, which I, you know, did achieve and was great. I started sort of seeing uh, and, and sort of experiencing in practice uh, many more goals or many more advantages of iClicker. That is, all students participate. We know that sometimes we, we ask a question and we have some students who are sitting often in front rows, happy to answer, happy to talk, open their mouths. And many more are somewhere maybe attentive, but not participating, being shy, or you know, many reasons. So iClicker will give them at least everybody will be able to participate. There is some kind of egalitarian, I guess, call it about that. Number two, independent thinking. So uh, we know ourselves that when we are asked a question, we may think, oh, that's probably the answer. Then somebody says it aloud and we are happy because we got it right. But actually that moment when students are really made to hit the button, to choose is it A or is it B or what it is, that is creating a, a situation for their independent thinking, for their independent decision, what they think is the right answer to that question. Number three, motivation. So uh, all that, so 21 students answered here, A, 27 answered B, 20 or two people, two students answered C. They know what they answered. So they know in which group they are. And sometimes a lot of students get something right and very few, just two, three will get wrong. Um, will get it wrong. So, so in a sense, it motivates them or that it, it will praises them for them. So nobody knows who answered what, of course. That is beautiful anonymity. They don't have to be ashamed if they keep getting things wrong, but then they will have to sort of start thinking, why am I getting it all the time wrong or et cetera, et cetera. So a uh, number four, uh, it's called in literature agile, ag agile teaching. So what it means is that then this is a good slide. I suddenly realized that it something must be wrong or something was wrong with my um, um, sort of um, lecture or with me uh, explaining when uh, our people created uh, very first objects or artifacts, which we now can call art. Because look, the distribution was 21 students at got A, 27 got B, more or less that's even. So I am not punishing the students and I can, you can do it on the fly. It's a moment you decide it. Of course you can uh, sort of go back and cover the issue or the subject again. You can involve students and say, okay, why did you answer A? Why did you answer B? depending how much time you have, you can sort of solve the situation differently. But of course, I am not going, if I feel that it was my fault that I did not cover a certain aspect sufficiently, of course, I'm not punishing them. But so in this case, everybody got a point, but I made sure, you know, this is, I made sure that they knew that what is the correct answer, but also they could see that I'm not punishing them because I'm explaining the whole I think so this is this agile teaching sometimes it's called um what's another word um well, it's the word that some some researchers don't want to uh, use contingent teaching contingent yes not not a happy word number five and this is i think what really um makes me what makes me go further and use more and research uh, more eye clicker. It's that I have to really focus on what I choose for, what, what examples I choose for my classes, 
uh, what is exactly the content, what learning outcomes are important because often I then sometimes I go back and I look, why do I ask you that question? That is not an important question for that lecture, for that class. So it really beautifully it sort of kicks me, well, it gives me more work, of course, but but it, it makes me focus and uh, reanalyze how I structured a given class session in, in many ways, in terms of content, in terms of learning outcomes, and how, uh, what kind of iClicker questions I created to support the, the learning of content and outcome. Now, disadvantages. Uh, there are disadvantages. Uh, SUU does not have institutional license, therefore students have to pay $15.99 per six months for the subscription. Another um, problem that I have to acknowledge is sometimes you have a student who says, oh, it stopped working for me. It, I cannot hit the button. It's nothing. It's frozen. So, of course, they will not get punished. They will not get zero points. I have to take into consideration um, the, the various uh, technological uh, glitches or problems. Joanna, uh, you're at about five minutes right now. Okay. So uh, these, are, these are the positive, two positive um, comments from students. And uh, at the very bottom, you will say you will see that students are saying, "Oh, we love these very different questions." So um, the, here you will see some um, some um, examples that application allows you to use, and we couldn't use it with remote because remote only allowed you to answer uh, multiple choice questions, A, B, C, D, etc. But with the target ones, I can, for example, show two images. There was a question about which one is a low relief, which one was a high relief. We studied it before. And on the fly in class, you can circle the correct image. Uh, and again, again, here, even you can choose students to uh, pinpoint what is the area that you're asking about. And again, you circle it around uh, deciding what, what's the right answer. Um, so sometimes you can use these target questions, and not only target questions, but simply to revise what image or what, what artwork we looked at at the previous class. And astonishingly, they did remember that very well. Um, here, I'm asking which one is a fresco, which one is a um, and caustic, so you know, two different techniques, which we just discussed, and then I'm sort of seeing how they retain that uh, information. Um, and um, sometimes there's a problem. I real this is the moment which I sort of it makes me really realize how important examples are, how um, we take things for granted. Here I was asking students which image sort of was earlier, was uh, who borrowed from whom, who appropriated an image. So the image on the right by Picasso is the earlier one. The image on the left comes from the late 20th century. So totally, they got it wrong. But I do understand this is me because I know the stylistic differences. I can see why you know, they didn't know it. So again, of course, I'm just showing you that only eight were correct. But in, in class, of course, I gave points to both of them and I sort of had to backtrack and uh, explain things. So let me just do a quick thing that um, maybe we can try this one because you haven't seen it. So I'm opening now, the class is open. So I'm opening, um, hold on, no, I didn't mean to hit that, sorry. I'm opening a short answer. And what it means is that uh, I will try now to put a word Hold on, my phone died. Um, I should be able to write one word um, saying what I learned or what method I learned about in any of the previous sessions. So any any word, but just one word. Let's see if we can do it. I can. I'm getting the message that my cell phone is reconnecting. So I don't know if that will work. I can see we are pushing. It's two minutes more. And we don't have any responses. Oh. Okay, so I'm typing now, let's say ePortfolio. That's what I'm typing in my cell phone. And I often use this. Oh, hold on. 
I often use it uh, with the short uh, words. I use it to sort of um, revise what I um, did in the class before. So I don't think I can actually put it, but I, we have one word. But the problem is <laughs> it will not be good example, but we should finish. So what happens? One minute. I close it, I close it and um, so we, I have my friend sort of just helping us out. So what happens is that if you get a lot of words here, like you're seeing just one word because one person answered. And if I do a so-called word cloud, you will get a lot of words. Now, if let's say a lot of people I wanted to write e-portfolio, e if we had a lot of participants writing e-portfolio, the word e-portfolio would be a big, huge word. And other words, if they were just used one time, uh, then they would be smaller. So this is the moment when I can see, okay, what do you remember from the last class or sort of revising any, uh, any sort of theme or, 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 or subject that I want. So that's more or less, um, I think, everything. Um, again, I thought about asking you which class is using iClicker, probably the one I guessed on the left because they are very alert. Um, and with art history, the, the, it's important to do what we call sort of visual analysis or which often is called the visual literacy. So I have these sort of modest three goals um, of my further sort of work and research with iClicker. So thank you very much. I think it's exactly three o'clock. So thank you to all who've been here with me. And if you have any questions in future, want to learn more, please feel free to, to contact me, to email me. Um, I will be happy to share anything that I know about that. Thank you so much, Joanna. It was oh, a pleasure to have you. I only saw one person. There are now three plus you. Thank you. <laughs> That's a nice surprise. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Joanna. Thank you, guys. Thank you.